Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 87th episode of the Manor Podcast. I'm your co-host, Roger Bodie, joined as always with my best friend and other co-host, Michael Hamilton. Michael, I uh, I got a, I have some chocolate I need to eat, so I'll probably just be eating it. I can't talk right now. Oh, God. Andrew. Stop. Uh, we got to record a podcast. Eat chocolate before or after, not during. That's rude. It's so good, though. <laughs> Josh Scott said I could eat it whenever I want. So Not I'll, during the podcast, stop. <laughs> but it's too good. I can't not stop. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Huh. okay. Last bite for now. I'll finish it we later. Can, you know, we could just record when you're not eating the chocolate. We can just pause, come back in a couple minutes. No. <laughs> I'm going to keep eating this chocolate for forever. I'm going to savor it. If you eat it forever, you're gonna run, oh, you're gonna run out if you keep eating it. That's not true. If I eat, take like little mini pieces like this, it'll last. Me. Okay. <laughs> the smallest piece of chocolate. Still good. <laughs> Have you finished your Josh Scott chocolate yet? No, I've actually I've eaten like two rows of it so far. Well, I, I shared a lot of the first row, but. I'm, uh, I've eaten two rows. I think I'm going to make put it in my fridge, keep it in my fridge, and then just like take a little cube off every now and then. It's really good, though. Thank you, Josh, <laughs> if you're listening. So we just won a Pro Tour, right? You and I, we met in the finals of the Pro Tour just like we were planning. It was Everything went exactly according to plan and was perfect the whole weekend, and neither of us hit Viscerai with no blues in our deck or had any issues or negative variants and we played perfectly the entire time. No, we that those are those are not the things that happened. Um, oh. Unfortunately, so it was all just a dream. So you know how sometimes people are like, "Oh man, this good thing happened." Is this a dream? It was actually just a dream for me. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess. I mean, like we did go to the pro tour. We had a good time, but our I would say our, our pro tour tournaments did not go particularly well. No, you at least made day two. Yeah, I, I had a pretty good start day one. I went five and two. Um, I lost my camera match at the KO mirror, and then I went two one in my draft and won the rest of the rounds. But that was it. A good day one, not a good day two. Yeah. Oh well, it was a good run. Um, so I guess the episode that we put we're gonna release about why we played the decks we did didn't go live because I was panicking about what version of Bolton I wanted to play because I thought it was going to be hybrid and then, or sorry, no, I thought it was going to be Raiden. And then I was like, no, Raiden's awful. I can't beat Kasai and a couple other decks. I need to play hybrid. And then I put played hybrid for a week, was happy for it. And it was the day before the pro tour. And I was like, I should go back to Raiden. It was literally like Thursday night. I locked back in on Raiden because I was like, if you take, I think Kasai was a horrible deck for the Pro Tour. Like Kasai was just like an actively bad choice for this particular tournament. So being dead to that matchup, I didn't mind just because I didn't think there would be a lot there and it'd be pretty unlucky to get paired into a Kasai. I thought overwhelmingly the tournament was going to be KO and Dromai and that wound up being the case. I would say the deck we really didn't see coming, though, was the Great Extorinthia being as popular as it was, huh? Oh, it was Hatchet Storinthia that was the most popular. Or sorry, version. some particular build of Axe Storinthia. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the the Hatchet of Body, Hatchet of Mind Dorinthia. I think they had mm-hmm. two copies in the top eight. Yeah. Yeah, finished second. Yeah. So uh, we definitely didn't expect that deck to be very good. Or I, I don't know if we should say to be very good but it was not like part of our testing regimen no not really i know you were happy with our testing schedule overall this go around but i feel like we were a little bit directionless uh this time yeah but- we we could probably do a whole episode on like how how our testing process went as a team and like what we learned from it and what things went well what things didn't go well but i think that's maybe a topic for another day. <laughs> yeah, we got to settle some things out and then we'll address some team prep and testing. So let's just focus on the actual flesh and blood cards this time because nobody wants to talk about dumb teams anymore anyways. So <laughs> the actual tournament itself, um, you played KO 
and you did not play cast bones, right? You play, you were a boneless KO. <laughs> yes, I was a boneless KO. I guess we. Uh, it feels weird to talk about this again because we we recorded an episode, the episode before I left, because and you said that part of why it didn't get published is because you were so wishy washy on the on the deck. Well, the reason we couldn't re-record it was because I went to Dallas a week early to go hang out with Brody and Michael and play the PTI event at Battle Hardened. So I was just we could have re-recorded it. I had my I had my travel microphones on me just it's right in my bag and i was like michael let's go record a podcast with my travel microphones and you're like no i hate you roger i'm not spending any time with you this weekend unless i have to and then we never hung out the whole weekend we played blood on the clock tower together what do you mean we didn't hang out the whole weekend? that's not one-on-one roger michael time i'm used to cuddling with you and staying with you and hanging out with you and seeing the first face before i go to sleep or when I wake up and the last face I see when it before I go to sleep. That's with the Michael Hamilton travel experience I'm used to. You you were welcome to stay at the Airbnb. You just arrange different plans. That's not yeah. that's not on me. That's true. I did enjoy hanging out with Justin. Yeah. From AGE. It was a good time. Yeah, Justin. You should cool. have stayed with Justin from AGE. I, I I was not invited to stay with Justin from AGE. I still have his keys. I have his keys to his apartment right here. <laughs> Did you bring his keys? Oh. I forgot they were in my bag. And because uh, just in case he and I ever got separated, uh, I, he gave me like keys That's to fair. get into his place. And then I forgot to give them back. So now I just live there, I think. I think I'm just welcome there anytime I want to go. I mean, you do have a key, so it checks yeah. out. Mm-hmm. No, I'll probably just mail back to him. <laughs> that That also makes sense. Um, but yeah, I played a KO deck. I was really happy with my KO deck. I think the most notable parts of it are it has no copies of Cast Bones. We played six copies of Bear Fangs, three reds, three yellows. I think that it's one of the, the strongest cards in KO. Just off a two-card hand, you get nine value out of the red, eight value out of the yellow. I think it's really strong. It's a good arsenal target. It's great with agility tokens. And the yellow is just like a card that I'm always happy to draw off my Blood Rush Bellow because it either pays for the attack or is the attack. It does both roles really well. So, yeah. Uh, my tournament didn't go too hot. I went 4-2 in draft and 4-4 in constructed. I think three of my losses, I can point to play mistakes that probably just cost me the game straight up. Um, in my first KO mirror on camera, I messed up the end game with like pulping wild ride stuff. I, I rolled scapskins and it was actually on, on stream. I rolled scapskins hit four and I played a bear fangs. And if I don't, and then I had a pulping in my arsenal, I played a bear fangs with one floating and I could have tunic clawed, but I tunic pulping instead, which meant that I was playing the pulping without the might token. So my opponent was able to block it out with all of their armor and go to three, which notably is one point above the reckless swing range of the deck. And I had two copies of reckless swing in my deck. So if instead I wait to play the pulpit with a might token, that'll leak one more damage and the reckless swing is lethal. And I think I probably get there in that game if I take that line instead. Um, and then my other games were not covered because I was pretty dead in the tournament. I think I was X three by the time we were playing more constructed in day two and I messed up a KO mirror kind of badly. I just never found, I just missed two good hat opportunities and instead had it at a bad time, which is really important to get your hat value in KO mirrors. And then I lost two in Azalea that played really well, but I literally didn't realize they were on New Horizon until like turn two of the game instead of Skullbone Cross Rep. And uh, you should you should probably know what hat your opponent's on. And I made some bad decisions there as well. And then those were the three rounds I I think I lost by punting. And then I sideboarded for Dorinthia as if they were Don Blade when I should have been. I think if I was more alive for the tournament, maybe I would have been more aware of what the Dorinthia decks alive were. But uh, turns out if you side for Don Blade and they're on Great Axe, you're pretty fatigable. So, oops. The, The game was really fun, though. Both of my games when I was dead for or very dead. Both my opponents were were quite pleasant, and I had a good time. But uh, oh well, <laughs> yeah. Oh well, like you said, not everybody is always going to do extremely well at the pro tour, and it's just super hard to even day two of pro tour. It turns out, and 
my day one, I lost round two on coverage. And so it was not a good day for the MNR cast on coverage. Both of us, both of us were big old coverage losers that day. I will say, sorry, I want to make sure. Uh, I, uh, Jordan Long, my opponent, did not want to be on coverage that round. He was extremely nervous and even asked the judge beforehand, like, uh, can I uh, not? This is the the pro tour and I'm already nervous to play in the pro tour. And this is the Roger Bodie. I can't lose to Roger <laughs> Bodie. If I lose to Roger Bodie on camera, people will know I'm one of the worst flesh and blood players of all time. So... I did my best in the feature match area to joke around, keep things light and friendly. And I think I even let him have a tunic counter or something like that after a miss trigger, like whatever. Uh, yeah, but he talked to me afterwards and he's like, thank you for, you know, being friendly and, and understanding about that. And I was like, you know what, man, at the end of the day, it's just a game. And that to me is worth more than winning my round two at a pro tour. Because there'll be other pro tours, there'll be other opportunities for me to do well at events and things like that down the line. This wasn't like my last swan song event. I say, I hope not. Otherwise, something's gone terribly wrong. But it's just, I, I think even at the highest level, you don't have to give like tunic triggers or anything like that. Like if you like, I don't fault you for playing to that degree at, at, at pro tours. But at the end of the day, no matter what level you're playing at the pro tour and armory worlds, you should still be friendly and welcoming to your opponent. And I think that's one of the most important things to always keep in mind when you're playing. Yeah. I, I think there's a difference between like not giving takes back, take backs or miss triggers and being like rude to your opponent. Like I, I had a couple opponents who I, I was not playing very well this, this weekend. And I, I would attack with my Kasai saber and then like a few seconds went by and I'm like, can, can I activate because I forgot to activate sign. They're like, no. And I'm like, but they were nice about it. And I'm like, that's fine. That's yeah, very reasonable. Yeah, yeah. I just forgot to use my thing. And I, I do think that's part of playing the game at a, like at a pro tour level, you're expected to just like take your actions in the order you want to activate them and not, not miss things that you want to do. It's just, and if you do miss them, that's, that's kind of on you and you should try your best not to do that. For sure. And then in round four, I got pa paired into Will Bradshaw on Azalea, and it was just like turn zero right in the ledger for 14, and I just had like cards that didn't block very well, or he had the combat trick with the Rainbow Razors to push it over, and just uh, it was just a, a cavalcade of me not playing the game from start to finish. So that game wasn't great. And then we go to draft, and one Brendan Patrick is in my draft pod, and... I thought there were more issues in other people's draft pods than there were because I wound up, long story short, there wound up being an issue with one of my packs where in pack three, there were th only three class commons left and it was two warrior cards, one brute card and no guardian card. So there sorry, were no- this, this was your pack one pick three, right? Yeah. Sorry. Did I say pack three? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Pa pack one pick three. Um, so in a normally collated pack, you know, there's supposed to be five class cards. So I thought that that meant that one of the people before me took a brute card and then one of them took a guardian card to hard signal since it was, it would be the only guardian card in the pack at that point. And I was like, okay, cool. So I know that there's a, probably a brute and a guardian ahead of me. I should be warrior. There's a red edge ahead in this pack. And the pack was just very deep for warrior overall. I move into warrior. Great. Lo and behold, it turns out neither of my two uh, pod mates were in guardian. And my pod actually went 4-4 four, four, uh, for warrior for Brute all the way up until I think halfway through pack two when Brendan Patrick pivoted into Guardian at that point. And yeah, so it was just that weird thing with the pack. Oh, and, and I guess I, I didn't mention that that was a replacement pack because the person two to my right counted their cards initially and there were 16 cards in their pack. So not supposed to be that many cards. So we get the replacement pack and then there were issues with that pack. So it was just... A weird thing. I was going to go a lot harder on this topic, but 
Uh, Brian on Twitter said that, that they are actively working on making sure that stuff like this doesn't happen. And it seems like the common consensus was that the packs were really good and the coalition for this did match boxes overall. When I was talking about it at the Pro Tour, I guess I was complaining and people were like, yeah, draft is really bad. But people didn't add the context that their prior experiences were draft were bad. I just thought they meant they were still continuing to be bad, but they it was more like, well, in Nationals, there was this horrible experience or in Uprising, there's this horrible experience. And I just was missing that distinction. So uh, I'm glad it's getting better at least, but you know, maybe next time I will we'll have the correctly sorted and collated pack. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I didn't realize that we were actually getting 24 boosters from the same box, but it makes sense with how the, the packs were labeled like uh, draft one pod number or whatever. So like they were just like taking a box and making the pod out of them. And thinking back, none of my drafts were like, this is a fifth red concuss or anything like that. It did seem like uh, ratios and, and, and numbers of things appearing that would naturally be open when you just open a box together. So I think LSS has taken our feedback on that and actually done a really good job. I, I kind of wish I knew that they were doing that because honestly our practice has become like a lot of the time we'll take like two boxes and we'll take half the packs from one box and half the packs of another box to try to like <laughs> try to uh, mimic the randomness that we expect from drafts at this point. But overall moving to trying to use one full box per pod is a great change and I think it's closer to an authentic draft experience that we'll see at like armories or wherever people are drafting. Yeah. And to take out some of the human element that's going to happen with just the very manual process where the judges have to, you know, open the, the packs and then stamp and then close them and check for like any damage cards and make sure everything's kosher that way. I think it would be cool. I just kind of came up with this idea when I was more fiery about the topic, but like if LSS printed like, pro tour draft boxes that had like an lss like gold stamp or something at the bottom and you could only get like these gold stamped like pre-packaged cards so this way you could just open the box at the table hand out your packs and know that the only way to get these cards would be in these drafts so you can't like add them because that's the whole reason why they they do the stamping right and this thing is that they want to make sure that people aren't taking extra cards from outside the game and be like oh look i have like five agile engagements and three red edge heads and perfect blue counts that, that only blocks three it was a really good draft you know so i don't know it, it, i don't know what the cost to break down for that would be versus paying the judges but it'd be cool yeah it, it would be really cool if they did something like that i think that that would have another issue where like you'd have to print like different print runs of these things for what day of the event they are because otherwise people could still sneak in their like pro tour day one draft cards into day two and that's why they use different color snaps stamp stamps based on the day Mm, I see what you're saying. So I think it would be a lot of extra work. I know magic towards the end of like the pre the end of the pre COVID tournament era was using like machines to like both stamp and even register your pools for you, which was really cool for the sealed events. But Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know some of my later sealed events, I just got, it was like a little like case that just had six packs worth of open cards and they were already registered. They're just like, here's your, yeah, I remember that, code. And it was but really they weren't cool. stamped or anything. They weren't stamped. I guess they don't need to be stamped that, unless you get, I guess you, maybe they do need to, maybe they would still need to be stamped. And it doesn't work for draft. I, I thought stamping was only for day two drafts well, for like everything. Cause they like, even in sealed normal tournaments, like you're never getting stamped cards for sealed tournaments. Right. Yeah. I think that's true. Hmm. They could stamp them though. If a machine can can scan and register a pool, it can definitely stamp them. <laughs> you build the machine, then Michael. You build it. Ah, I I have been doing a lot of programming, but I haven't done like physical robotics work. That would be that would be pretty cool too. Look at take that on as a project though. So <laughs> did didn't do well in the class constructed. One toed my draft. Uh, there were four warriors, and I played against Ko. Uh, Betsy and then a KO and you know sometimes you don't get paired into the other horrible warrior decks in your pod but that's okay so I play the calling and I lose round one to Max because he techlo mecked up and dealt like 50 damage to me before I Lumina Ascension comboed him 
So that was not a great start. Win my next two and then get paired into Kaiser. Yeah, Kaiser Wong from Team Blue Pitch. And Kaiser's on Victor, and I've been destroying Victor's on Bolton, man. I can't even tell you the last time I lost to a Victor. And it's the end of the game. I got like 10 cards left in my deck. I'm remembering my pitch deck, and I'm like, oh, yeah, so this card isn't Lumina Ascension. I need to use Beacon because Lumina Ascension's two cards down. And then I go for uh, – I have Via the Vanguard and double Lumina Ascension all lined up, and my opponent's only at like 22. And I'm like, okay, cool. This should be – Perfect amount of damage to kill them. They shouldn't be able to live through this. I'm going to do it. I crack my energy potion. So I get two resources. I use the first resource to cr crack, uh, not Brave Forge Bracers, uh, Gallantry Gold. Yeah. And then I attack with my Via the Vanguard and I charge one card. And I'm like, cool, we did it. And then I'm like, oh, wait a second. I forgot to crack courage a blade holds like no. a dum dum, <laughs> and uh, so then I have to break the combat chain, <laughs> crack my courage a blade hold, play my Lumina Ascensions, and I wind up not killing him by like three life, and I have one card left in my deck at the end of my combo, and it's one red uh, blade flurry, and uh, I lose. But you know what? What are you gonna do? Know how to play the game. If only, if only you had uh, six more damage that turn from uh, uh, something, something like a via the vanguard buffing your sword attacks by plus one. If only, Un unlucky, unlucky, unlucky. Really. So I'm tilted. I'm sad. I'm two two. I, I scrubbed the pro tour. I'm two two in this calling. Things. It's just not my weekend so far. And so, basically, I have to win out day one to go six and two in order to day two the calling. Well, I do that, and then I start day two, and I get paired into Dromai, and I am like <laughs> oh and five into Dromai's at this point in in like constructed like rated, rated events. events. Like I I double lost to it in the battle harden. It killed me in like callings and art. Like I am just been just getting destroyed by Dromai's, but I won. I did it. I beat a draw my round one of day two, so that I'm still X and two. And if I win out all the rest of my rounds, cool, I get to still make top eight. I win my next one, but then I lose into Dio. Uh, I am not very practiced into Dio, it turns out, and I did not know what I should be doing in that game. I didn't know if I could fatigue with my package, or if I just had a like combo race, or if like even if just like a raid and beat town was the plan. I really just need more reps into that hero. Uh, so I think I just lost that match because of just like knowledge and experience. I do think, for what it's worth, all the Bolton gamers in the world, I think you should be trying to Sabres combo against Dio. I don't think you can block out fatigue from the start. Mostly. Yeah, yeah, I should have pivoted more. Toward, I, I was like blocking with like Lumina Ascensions at the end of the game, just like trying to go for the fatigue. And I, I just, the third maximum velocity, you know, pretty good. So, oh well, dead for top eight, you know, still live for cash, play the rest of my uh, tournament, win the next two. Get paired into Dave Lynn from the Wolfpack in the last round on uh, KO. I've been crushing KOs all weekend. Raiden just destroys KO because uh, you just race them and you race them and then you get to the end of the game and you say, I can block you all I want, KO. And then you can't block me at all because you have pearls and only attack actions to block with. So if you try to block me, you get hard punish and I win the race. Uh, it's a very clean plan. I like it. I've implemented it successfully implemented it very successfully over the weekend and dave picks up a dice and says uh scabskins and he hands it to me or maybe i pick up the dice i don't know i roll a scabskin leathers for him and i roll him a six and he gets three action points and deals like 15 damage to me in that turn cycle and i lose the game and you know what? it is what it is yeah scabskins is sure a um piece of equipment it's power level it's probably the best boots in the game Maybe Valiant Dynamo has an argument for being up there. Valiant Dynamo, because we saw it blocking like six to eight life or damage in some games this weekend. Some probably sometimes more. I didn't see more than that, but it blocks a lot. So maybe it's the second best shoes in the game right now, but it's not very, um, it's not very fun. <laughs> 
Not particularly. I feel like every time I all I saw all the scab skins, people would just sighed. They're just like, "This is so dumb. Why am I doing this?" And then they just win. And <laughs> or they just or will one and die. That's that's, that's also in the range. Yeah. So uh, it was a good run. Wound up finishing twenty fourth. Not bad. I just wanted, especially after scrubbing a pro tour, it felt good to at least like get like a solid finish. And, you know, I feel like right now, like, you know, that meme picture where it's just like the guy who's like spraying champagne everywhere and biting his metal and kissing a girl. But then he's like, he's like third place on the podium and the other two people are like, what are you doing? That's what I feel like right now. I feel I feel really good despite about having a super marginal finish because I made more money on the uh, weekend than Michael Hamilton. So, you know what? (laughs) Can't complain. Uh, I didn't make any money. So that's not a that's not a hard. There you go. To pass. I uh, so I, I made day two of the the pro tour and did pretty bad in day two of the pro tour, three and four in day two to get like ninetieth something or a hundredth place, and then on Sunday I was like, hmm, do I want to wake up to play a, a living legend battle hardened? You offered me an ice lander deck I could play, ben and a hundred dollars to play it. Van Hannon offered me a, a, a control starbo deck to play, which. I, I like Control Star. I've done. I've played that guy a lot. It's a good time. Um, but Saturday night, we decided to play Blood on the Clock Tower. And you see, we started this game at like 10 p.m. And this game ended at like 2 something in the morning. And when that game ended at 2 something in the morning, after I had long, my long fight to triumph over the village as the imp, that was not always the imp, but was originally the Scarlet Woman, I was going to sleep and I had no intentions of waking up to play the battle hardened at 9am the next day. So instead I slept in and then uh, the morning I woke up, I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but uh, I think Ellie reached out to me, Ellie bird. And she said that there was cube drafts going on. And I was like, I love cube drafts. So we went, uh, me and Ben actually went over and met Oliver and some other people running, doing uh, cube drafts there. And we played a sweet Katsu 1v1 cube. And then we drafted, uh, I think we drafted, it's called Midwinter Cube, I think, with Azalea, Lexi, Icelander, and Kano. It was a great time. I was glad they had us. And I was much happier with sleeping in and doing that than trying to wake up at 9 a.m. to play <laughs> the Battle Hearted off no sleep and also not knowing anything about the Living Legend format. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame that I got 24th at the calling because if I if I did scrub, at least I knew I would have won the calling on Icelander. Oh, well, there'll be another Living Legend tournament to win on Icelander. I think an Icelander bubbled on knife in the tournament. I think the deck is good. And I think if chains aren't respecting it and people aren't practice into their Icelander matchups, I think she's actively good. Especially if Lexis aren't running Trench in their sideboard, because then, like, if you're running cards like Encase or Ice Spine, you can really just lock them out of entire turn cycles. So, yeah, it sucks. You only get one channel like Frigid, one Hyperthermia, and one uh, Warmonger Supremacy in that format. But if you think about it like that, like, just get rid of Hyperthermia and Warmonger Supremacy and just think about about like just you have three really impactful blue pieces of disruption so you'll see those as about as often as you would see your three channel like fridges anyways you just don't get 12 copies of it and like that seems fine yeah it's not the chain matchup i'm concerned with as i center i think i center can be built to be favored in the chain it's just like how do you beat the lexis and the starvos which i think both those matchups are horrible for icelander well you get amulet of ice back into starvo and i i need to practice that matchup a good amount just to see if like the hand disruption plan is like good into him uh lexi's i don't know like i said i'm mostly just planning on them not having trench i imagine if they do have trench then lexi's quite probably good into icelander because in class constructed lexi was good into icelander and i don't think aimant of ice does much of anything because voltaire could be activated at instant speed <laughs> and <laughs> so yeah i don't know we'll see yeah, I, I don't even think the Lexis need Trench anymore because the reason they had Trench was to fight the three copies of Warmonger's Diplomacy and when you're only playing one copy. Like, you're going to get them sometimes, but, like, Channel was your best card against Lexi, followed by Warmonger's Diplomacy, and Hypothermia is okay against Lexi. Um, well, you get three more Warmonger's Diplomacy, but if you have three in case and you encase them and you encase their face-down Arsenal card, their turn cycle's over, right? 
Well, okay. That, in case it's pretty good against Lexi. That's fair. yeah. There you go. That's that's the reason why I was on three in case specifically. Uh, yeah, because I don't think it does very much into any other matchups in the format. Like Chain doesn't really care about activating equipment. Maybe if like you're encasing them and then you arsenal a secret hypothermia and then you go for a hypothermia to shut down their turn so they can't well, activate their shoes. And and case is kind of good against chain because it stops his hero power too, right? So it can't. Oh can't finish yeah, that's right. Attack go again. That's right. So yeah, yeah. Case is just good in the format. I, I like it more than yellow aether ice vein at the very least. That's fair. Yellow aether ice vein was never good. It was like a necessary evil. Yeah. So I don't know. I think there's I think there's merit for the hero. Do I think she's legitimately actually like best deck in a format or like actually like tier tier one? Probably not. But I think she's good. I think she's playable. I think she can take down tournaments if like people aren't expecting her or uh, like not even expecting her, but like res- respecting her and haven't practiced the matchup. And but I think getting ninth is like saying something about the hero, right? Yeah, definitely. And I think if the metagame is chained and Lexi's with no trench, maybe maybe that is a good spot for Ice Center to be in. And we saw no Starvos in the top eight. I don't think there were any prisms in the top eight either there might have been one prism is pretty tough for ice ender as well but yeah quite uh, tough actually i think they posted deck lists yeah we'll, we'll have to look see. maybe there were prisms in the top eight if there were prisms in the top eight i'm sorry sorry prisms i know there were a lot of chains and at least one lexi because... they have not posted the battle heart and deck list yet oh. but shout outs to our teammates, Brody Spurlock and Michael Funk, for meeting in the finals of the Battle Heart. And that's, that's copycats. Cool. Two, They're two good copycats. friends meeting in the finals of a Battle Heart. And that's, <laughs> that's a, they quite saw an us do it. And they're like, no, we got to do that now. And they, <laughs> they had to go and copy us. Yeah. We were the original best friends to meet in the finals of a Battle Heart. And Michael, <laughs> they can't take that away from us. Yeah. And it's pretty crazy that. But that happened to them, though, because like once again, it's just like, what are the odds? Like, not great, like, but yeah, because they had still once again have to be paired on like opposite sides of the bracket, or no, same side of the bracket, or no, opposite sides of the bracket, and then also then win all their matches into the top eight, so or finals. Yeah. And speaking of uh, that battle hard, and Brody was also the one storytelling our blood on the clock tower game that ended at two thirty the night before. He was so I don't like know how half he did it asleep. On no sleep. <laughs> um, the uh, yeah, because well, like, it, oh yeah. After that, after that night, we had dinner, and then he ran another blood on the clock tower game that ended at like two in the morning that Sunday night. So I don't know how he does it. I need much more sleep than that. You're also not eighteen. I feel like I needed more sleep than that when I was eighteen, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. When I was 18, dude, I was staying up for like 48 hours straight. Like it was fine. No problem. Easy. You chug some Red Bulls. You uh, take some stimulants. And you just stay up and have a grand old time. But I remember when I was that age and I stayed up too late, I just like brought a pillow to school and just like slept at school. Hell Those yeah, dude. Times. I slept through so many of my morning classes in high school. Oh, man. Like, if you were a morning class teacher in high school, you probably saw more of the back of my head face down on the desk than the actual, like, me looking up at the, at the classroom. All right. In case we have any young youngins watching, this is not advice for your school life. This is just <laughs> what we did. <laughs> if you're smart enough, you can get away with it. I think it's fine. As long as, like, your grades are okay, then, like, that's what, like, the ends justify the means, right? All's well that ends well. If you pass uh, sure. out and sleep through all your classes and fail, then, then like, that, I mean, you, you got to talk about that. But, like, if Austin was, like, sleeping through all of his high school classes and still bringing home A's and B's, I don't care. Whatever. Yeah, I guess, like, I don't know, ultimately, it's probably a failure of our school system if, like, you can, if kids that are sleeping through classes can pass and kids that are trying can fail, it's... Not great, I but yeah, I don't uh, know. America. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that was the Pro Tour in a nutshell. Pro Tour weekend. Uh, I guess the other notable news was Dromai is what like two to four points short of Living Legend now that she's uh, won the Pro Tour. Yeah, congratulations to Arthur. Arthur, Arthur what's his last name? 
our Dromai champion <laughs> on winning the Pro Tour. <laughs> I actually played against him in day two, playing for our 3-0 of the draft pod, which he defeated me in the least close game of limited I played this weekend. He had a very, very strong KO deck, and he played it very, very well. And I think he ended the game with like 12 life when I died, which that's a lot of life. Yeah, I saw him smash you real good. I watched that game. And then, yeah, he won the Pro Tour with Dromai, and she now has 996 of 100 points, very likely to LL out the first weekend of ProQuest if she lasts that long. I think there's a couple opportunities for her to LL before then. Okay. I just think it's it's amusing to me that I finally beat Dromai in the, in the classic constructed rated event. And then she living legends. It's just like I finally get, I finally climbed Mount Everest and Mount Everest living legends. You know, yeah. But for what it's worth, you'd probably struggle in a drum I still, even though you've overcome it once. You know, you would, uh, you probably wouldn't beat it all the rest of the time she fight it just because you beat her once. Are you saying I got lucky, Michael? No, no. I, I, I. There's a lot of variance in card games, and you know, maybe it just won't go your way next time. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Fair enough. If if you need some reminders, I'm always happy to play a, a game or two of Dromai into Bolton. I uh, I, I really like playing Dromai in her 80% win rate matchups. I always find it a good time. Yeah. So with Dromai leaving, we're down to Prism as the only illusionist until Mistvale vale comes out, and then we get the new Mistvale vale Mystic illusionist. So yeah. What do you think about the new Mistvale vale heroes that were spoiled over the weekend too? Uh, I don't know. There's a lot that went down in that trailer. Um, <laughs> the sexy trailer. New, new seems like a, a hero. That's for sure. Um, I I think that we don't really know enough to really give strong opinions on what will be good or what the new heroes will even play like. Really, they have some new resource. Mystic seems like the blue talent, which is kind of cool. I like blues, so I'm excited. I thought to Ice get was the blue talent. Ice isn't a blue talent. Ice is just ice, right? I guess Ice is the blue element, but that's like like Lightning's the red element and Earth the is Earth the yellow. No, Lightning's the yellow element and Earth is the red element from Arya. But like Draconic's red, so like Ice Ice is just an element. It can't be like it's not the the talent of the the pitch color because. I guess light is yellow too. I don't know, man. I think Mystic Mystic looks blue based. We we got two new spoilers that both care about blues and they're both Mystic cards, so we'll see. Yeah. It doesn't matter really what they do because now that uh Dromai's gone, the the shackles are off. 100% confirmed Bolton's best deck. I don't even care what those guys do. I don't even care what the Mystic card pools are. It doesn't matter. They're coming in into tier tier two right off the bat because bolton's alone in s tier nothing stopping him anymore he's got no more bad matchups just best deck right um how's your hatchet dorinthia matchup on sabers how can you lose they just like hit you and you never deal damage to them you just 50 damage lumina ascension combo them okay if you say so <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, I don't know how it's any different than Kasai, right? Oh. I don't know if the uh, Kasai matchups is good as a... Uh, as, uh, Kasai's a buy for save. I don't know what you're talking about. It's fine. I think I think maybe I'll play some some two-handed warriors over here that are not bullet and I got to see how these matchups are as bad as you say they are. I think this might sure. be the... I feel like this might be the thing where like, Everyone says their matchup into Dromai is so good, and then I play Dromai, and then Dromai just beats everything up. I never said my matchup into I always said I was can't ever beat Dromai. I'm mm. honest, that, Michael. Well, that, that, wasn't that because like a year ago or something I played Dromai games into you, and you're like, okay, maybe this matchup is bad? Are you saying that we like played a Bolton v Dromai game where I was really confident in Bolton's ability on like some kind of other YouTube channel and that it was recorded for the world to see and watch for all of time and I somehow lost that game? Is that what you're claiming? Oh, I do remember that three floating video, but I feel like we played more <laughs> after that. <laughs> that game was actually closer than a lot of our Bolton Dromai games have been, I feel like. 
yeah, I've learned so much since then. I've gotten so many new pieces of equipment and none of it mattered because drum was still better. <laughs> but it's okay. You can keep proclaiming that drum is unplayable. Wait, that was before I, we had Tome of the Imperial Flame. It was. Oh. And four more living legend points, she will be literally unplayable in class constructed. I was right That's all true. along. I will be forever more right that she's unplayable. Yeah. 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 For sure. So back to the Misvale heroes quickly, though. So I thought it was really interesting that basically James White did like the poll of the crowd by like applause, like who's excited for new? And I don't even remember what the stupid illusion's name is. Enigma. This, the, an, huh? Amoeba? Enigma. Uh, Enigma. Okay. Uh, I couldn't tell you what the cat ninja is, though. Zen. Oh, Zen. Yeah, no one's I feel excited like for Zen. No one's excited for Zen, and I feel I'm the most terrified of Zen out of out of any of them. Hmm. I think he's like his just being able to activate like that hero ability. It's like imagine if Katsu's ability wasn't tied to the on hit, and it was just an activated ability you can just use. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. Yeah, it, it costs those those blue resources, and we'll have to see what those blue resources are. But yeah, yeah, it, we'll it does. I think all three of their abilities. Well, I don't even remember New's ability. Enigma's uh, ability seem kind of strong. Just make a shield, put a counter on it. Uh, New's ability is that you get to take your opponent's blues from banish and cast them. Oh yeah, that that one seems not as quite as strong as the other ones, unless there's some really good blues sitting in banish. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, it combos with surgical extraction. Yeah, yeah. I I am really excited for. Uh, for some powerful blues, though, because man, I've always wanted to play warrior, and I look at the warrior blues, I'm like, there's no playable blues. I can't play warrior. <laughs> well, they spoiled those blue today, and they got two in the bottom right hand corner. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Uh, any final th- topics you want to talk about, Michael? Any points about the Pro Tour life? Anything? All right, I'm telling y'all, no cast bones in your KO decks. You will win more games if you cut all the cast bones. Yeah, be like Michael and not money the Pro Tour with your amazing build of the deck without cast bones. I played so bad. You just have to play well with your no cast bones. You can't. You can't just punt away your games. You gotta. You gotta cut the cast bones and you gotta play well. That's the secret. That does sound right. <laughs> you also have to hit. You're not unwinnable matchups too you don't have any unwinnable matchups this ko your worst matchups like one of the warrior Bolton. decks where you just get bailed out by rolling scabs <laughs> <sighs> true oh well my final thought is going to be thank you to everybody who said nice things to me over the weekend about the podcast uh max i think in particular was really nice and excited to say hi so i enjoyed that conversation with him uh, but there were just a lot of people over the entire weekend who uh, were really appreciative of the content and that were making it again. And thank you to all the the people who, who said something. I, I really appreciate it. And I hope to see all of you going forward, too. That's that's a much, much nicer final note than mine. So thank you also, everybody. I appreciated the kind words that I had. Though me and Roger were comparing numbers at the end of the day, and y'all talked to Roger. Nobody talked to me in comparing. Not nobody. I had a, more than, I had some people talk to me, but Roger was very popular this weekend. Yeah, I don't know why. Like, maybe you're just like the GOAT Michael Hamilton, too good at flesh and blood for mere mortals to approach. And I'm just like, yeah, Roger's the every guy. He sucks. He'll, he could talk to you. It's no big deal. Uh, I don't, but it, it is interesting to me, the, the disparity, because it's not just this weekend. I feel like in Hartford, I was like, I had a bunch of people come up to me and I was like, did anybody say anything to you? And you were like, not really. And I was like, hmm. Uh, I like talking to you, Michael. I'll always talk to you and tell you how much I like the podcast. Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay. Anytime. I, I do, I do appreciate those that did say something and i am also glad you're doing the podcast again roger i've been having a good time that's good are you having a good enough time you do the sign off this week i do the sign off yeah you do your quippy i I want to hear a michael hamilton quippy maybe if you do more quippies at the end of episodes you'll get more people to approach you 
I don't know what a quippy is, but always remember, whenever you're doing quippies at the end of an episode, find your manners. We'll see you next time. Thank you.